Hello YouTube, this is Quick Review, and today I'm going to be talking about DxO Optics Pro 11. For those of you who are not familiar with this software, um, DxO has been around for a while. Uh, they specialize in uh, photo software, um, and I think Optics Pro is their flagship product. Uh, personally, I've been using Optics Pro for about uh, two and a half years. I started with version 9, upgraded to 10, and just about a month and a half ago, I upgraded to version 11. Um, as far as the software goes, uh, basically this thing comes in two flavors. Uh, you have Essential and Elite Edition. Uh, the difference between these two um, are, first of all, price uh, is $70 more for Elite Edition, but when it comes to features, um, as you can see, uh, majority of options and uh, tools are absolutely identical, uh, but uh, <clears throat> the differences start with uh, very fine-tuning tools that you're going to only find on Elite side. Now, um, my suggestion, if you are to test run this, you can definitely go to DxO website, download the trial version, give it a test run for about a month, uh, and then you can decide basically which one you think will be um, will be best for you. As far as I can tell you, Essential Edition is really good to start with, um, and you can upgrade to Elite uh, at any given time for, I think, 60 or $70 uh, more. So uh, once again, you know, probably trial version will be the best, and then uh, picking um, Essential or Elite after that, if you like it, will be uh, something that I will recommend. So let's go straight into uh, the software itself. As you can see, the feel and look, um, you know, when you open this uh, the software, uh, it's very straightforward, it's very clean. On the left-hand side, you're gonna find <coughs> Organize tab. Um, this is when you're gonna basically browse through your folders, uh, find the folder that contains photos that you wanna edit, and down below, uh, you are going to see all those uh, images that uh, that folder basically contains. Now, um, first thing before I start, uh, I'm going to mention, I'm not going to dig too deep into uh, technical side. I'm not going to be able to cover uh, all the tools, all the features in the software. I'm going to cover that with, uh, you know, in some other video. Uh, but I'm going to give you uh, kind of a rough idea how fast you can process raw image. Um, the XO Optics Pro, um, all the versions, um, are very good uh, for, as I said, raw image processing. And the reason is uh, the XO spent a lot of time and effort developing presets for various cameras and lenses um, that uh, people are using. So in this particular case, um, I shot this with Nikon D10, um, actually D610. Um, and uh, <clears throat> I used um, Zeiss Distagon 21 f 2.8 lens. So right off the bat, once you open this picture, uh, DxO will apply a default preset based on camera and lens used. So if I click uh, on this compare button, you can see uh, that uh, some uh, geometry uh, settings were applied and of course, there is no more vignetting on uh, on an image itself. Uh, so this will be a starting point. Now, um, looking at the picture itself, as I said, this is you know kind of a landscape shot. Um, I shot it a couple of years ago in one of those rivers um, here in Ontario. Uh, so the first thing what I will do, as far as I can tell right now, the picture is kind of a little bit crooked. Um, and I'm gonna use this uh, horizon tool. Uh, very easy and simple. Um, you're just going to move uh, this um, uh, two points in a direction that you will um, prefer, I guess, and then click apply. So as soon as I do that, there we go. Um, picture looks a little bit more um, horizontal, actually. You know, it, it feels definitely better than before. Now, as far as the tools and options uh, that come with the Optics Pro, you're going to find that on the right hand side. So you're gonna find your histogram um, and all other things that uh, you're gonna be using, we're gonna be using today to process this image. So um, Essential Tools basically contains white balance, exposure compensation. 
Um, in this particular case, I think as far as the white balance goes, um, I don't find nothing really too uh, bad uh, with this uh, settings. Uh, so this is this is a camera settings. Now you can play with it. You can go with a daylight, cloudy, tungsten, whatever actually lighting conditions are applied when picture was taken. But I'm going to leave it as shot because I think it looks uh, pretty decent at this point. Uh, you can play with a temperature and tint, of course, if you choose to go manual mode. Um, exposure compensation, uh, if I actually enable this option, you will see that uh, I have uh, options between smart, uh, center weighted average, uh, highlight priority, slight, medium and strong. And of course, uh, you know, I can play with a manual setting. So what I'm going to pick here, I'm going to go with smart. Now, you're not going to see any major difference uh, in terms of exposure compensation because uh, the picture, in my opinion, uh, as far as compensation uh, exposure goes, it's pretty good. So I'm going to move down to this uh, option, which is DxO Smart Lighting. Um, one thing that uh, I got to mention here, this is uh, specifically developed by DxO. It's a very good tool, especially if you dealing with uh, pictures taken with the poor lighting or images with the high ISO settings. Uh, two options here, you can go with uniform or spot weighted. Uh, spot weighted is, uh, I think, a tool that was developed by DxO specifically for portraits uh, because uh, if you're looking here down below, it says no face detected. Uh, this, uh, this feature will actually adjust lighting uh, based on, you know, people faces. So it will recognize the face. In our case, it's a landscape shot, so I'm going to definitely keep it uniform. Um, in the mode section, you have option between slight, medium, strong. Um, you can go custom, and of course, you have presets designed for DxO Optics Pro 9 and 7. So if I leave it at, for example, medium, uh, this will change a little bit uh, that those highlights uh, in upper portion of the picture uh, with, with the sky. Uh, but not that much. Um, intensity is another uh, fine-tuning tool. Uh, you can go up and down. Uh, the differences um, will be uh, will be like a really drastic, but uh, you know you will definitely notice uh, some uh, some difference, of course, compared to the uh, previous uh, uh, previous uh, section. So, uh, moving along, uh, you have selective tones here uh, on the picture itself um, you know the first thing that I will notice is that shadows are really really dark and I have a problem with a lot of um, highlights in this area so uh, things are kind of overblown so I'm gonna try to uh, use the shadow tool and bring a little bit uh, those shadows um, up to the light and uh, brighten things up um, on the highlight section, you can play with this too. Um, if you, um, in this particular case, I'm going to try to maybe uh, go with maybe minus 16, which right away brings these clouds, um, you know, a little bit forward. So they're more noticeable on a picture. Uh, blacks, um, it's just like a, you know, uh, a thing that uh, you can play with and, you know, try to... Uh, go up and down but uh, in this particular scenario I'm gonna leave it as is basically at zero. Um, now it comes like a, a really cool section here and this is DxO clear view. Uh, I really like this tool uh, and the reason is it really uh, speed up the process of uh, uh, you know doing uh, and, and processing raw image. So if I go with this option uh, right away you see that uh, things pop up like a very very much so a lot of things get um, kind of balanced in regards to um, shadows highlights but also mid tones too um, one thing that of course like uh, this tool comes with you can uh, intensify right now it's at 50 if i go like a, let's say at about 87 um, i think this is really too punchy so what i will do I will leave it at about maybe 40 
um, in this in this particular case I think uh, it will work very very well with uh, with the image itself so right off the bat like uh, if I compare this to what we have what we started with um, image definitely looks much better now there's still something that we need to uh, probably improve in this image um, when it comes to contrast um, as soon as I enable this option uh, you probably noticed that uh, micro contrast went up to 16 and this is what DxO will recommend you to go with a micro contrast at uh, um, scale of 16 which you know brings a little bit more attention uh, specifically like a, let's say in highlighted area so if I will go to uh, let's say um, one by one so this is a hundred percent um, zoom um, if I will, let's say, compare this to um, original uh, raw file, the difference is definitely quite noticeable. So uh, let's go back to uh, the image itself right now in this zoom mode. Um, noise reduction and crop uh, in this um, for this particular image. I'm not going to spend too much time on a noise, noise reduction. I think the uh, DxO Optics Pro 11 um, comes with amazing noise reduction feature. I think the algorithm that uh, DxO develops for this product is absolutely amazing. Now, considering this uh, landscape shot uh, was actually created with ISO 100, noise reduction is really not um, that extensive. Uh, it's just uh, basically, uh, you know, a very low uh, grain kind of like a um, stuff that we have to deal here. So I'm not going to actually go through this. I'm just going to mention you have uh, HQ and Prime. If I go with Prime option, um, again, you're not going to notice very uh, big difference. But uh, uh, trust me, Prime works very well with pictures taken with ISO uh, from, let's say, 1600 and up and does absolutely great job. Um, moving down along with uh, colors. So color rendering, again, it's one other feature that I really, really like. Um, one thing that um, I'm gonna tell you is that you can play with the different settings and I'm just gonna show you one option. Uh, when, uh, when I'm processing images, I might actually pick another camera uh, and another uh, kind of preset that uh, will be applicable to this picture. Uh, once again, very, very cool feature. So in terms of <clears throat> um, uh, setup that we have right now, we're done with a general rendering based on Nikon D610 camera and of course uh, Zeiss 21 uh, millimeter lens. Now if I click on a camera body, right off the bat you can notice there's a difference in color and saturation and everything else. Uh, and this is based on Canon 1000D, um, uh, old camera, but uh, it's, it's just, uh, it's just you know, comes out as a default. Uh, as you can see, there is a tons of cameras uh, that you can pick and choose, uh, anything from Canon, Nikon, Olympus, Pentax, uh, and so on and so forth. So in this uh, case, I'm going to pick, for example, um, a Leica uh, camera. And you can see right off the bat, uh, how things changed uh, on on the image. So uh, color saturation is quite pronounced. Uh, I think the uh, the contrast uh, it's popped up and everything uh, looks really really cool. Now I will try to tone this down if I pick for example like a M. Um, this looks definitely a little bit better because uh, skies would uh, other setup are really really strong. Um, you can, of course, uh, you know, play with intensity on this one too. Uh, you can go all to zero. And this is how it's going to look like. And uh, if we go all the way uh, to the right side and, you know, pick up like 200, in this particular case, I think it's going to be uh, too much. So I'm going to leave this one at about, uh, for example, 80. Um, and, uh, you know, right now uh, as as the picture goes I think it looks definitely very very good uh, once again if we compare this to what we started with uh, this result is definitely great uh, one last thing that uh, you know I'm going to do here is just to maybe uh, spend some time on sharpening uh, the image itself uh, in my opinion it's already uh, pretty sharp 
but uh, if we are to play with the sharpness, we have two options. We have unsharp mask and we have a DxO lens softness. Uh, either one you pick, they're really, really good. But um, I'm going to concentrate on this DxO lens software, which is based, again, uh, on a camera itself, what uh, internal settings you pick. Uh, in this particular shot on Nikon D610, I set up sharpness at zero. And uh, if you pick, for example, global uh, sharpness, and if I increase this to, for example, one, uh, right off the bat, you see the difference. I think this looks like pretty much uh, over sharpened to me. Um, you can definitely play with the details in bokeh. Uh, you know, if you want to preserve basically a detail, not to go too much. But if I will, uh, you know, change these settings, I will probably leave at about, uh, you know, 20 or 25 because it works probably the best uh, in our case right here. So um, other things that uh, you can also change uh, in terms of geometry, um, you know, distortion and vignetting. Uh, distortion itself, of course, will be applied on a DxO module for the lens itself. And then vignetting here, um, it's applicable to size 21 millimeter. I tend to have, um, I like to have a, just a little bit of vignetting. So usually what I do, I bring this one to about 60, uh, which, you know, gives a, a nice round kind of darkness around the picture uh, with a lot of, uh, you know, kind of focus what's going on right in the middle. So there you go. As you can see, the picture itself looks uh, pretty good to me uh, at this point. Uh, from workflow perspective, this will be for me the first step uh, in, a, in a whole process because uh, raw image that I will process in Optics Pro, I will move it then to either uh, Adobe Photoshop or Adobe Lightroom for some really fine tuning and doing some uh, really small little things that, um, you know, I think it's still necessary, um, you know, to be done. Uh, but, you know, as far as the Optics Pro goes, I think this starting point, it's really, really good. And, uh, you know, all I can tell you, um, it's, you know, uh, in my opinion, very good, uh, very good package. So all in all, I took about, uh, you know, five, six minutes uh, to um, basically convert this image into this. Um, and as you could see, uh, you know, it was uh, pretty easy and very straightforward. So once again, thank you very much. I hope you like this video, uh, DxO Optics Pro 11 Elite version. Uh, more stuff will be posted and I'm going to try to uh, create another videos with a much in-depth review of this product, uh, utilizing some uh, um, other tools uh, that uh, DxO Optics Pro comes with. And uh, so stick around. Uh, more stuff will be posted, so please click like and subscribe button, and I'll see you next one.